How's it going, Radical viewers, and welcome back to another Grim Rolls, where we try to recreate well-known, unique, or infamous characters in Baldur's Gate 3. Time stamps down below in the description for your convenience, but for now, let's dive into the lore of today's subject. You can set it all on fire. Bruinor Battlehammer, the 8th, 10th, and 13th King of Mithril Hall from 1356 Dale Reckoning to 1362, and again in 1370 to 1409. He was a dwarf and adoptive father of Caddy Bree and Wolfgar, friend to Dritz de Erd and Regis, all who we also have videos up for featuring those who want an entire party of their own companions of the Hall, so be sure to check those out as well. He was also the crafter of Aegis Fang, and a member of the Companions of the Hall himself. This red-bearded dwarf has more notches in his axe than coins in a dragon's hoard, or I'm a bearded gnome. Should come as no surprise that Brunor is a dwarf, possibly the most dwarf of all dwarves next to Plint and Ivan Boulder-Shoulder. Shield Dwarf specifically, and as Bruner we're starting with fighter and never looking back, as our hot-headed short king of the hall is pure dwarven yearning to fight, fight, and fight some more. Our fighting style will be taking either dueling or defense, depending on how we want our red-bearded dwarf to be, the nurturing, fatherly, yet stern king of Mithra Hall, or the hot-blooded, notched axe of the companions. Background is noble, as it's as close as we can get to King for our mighty short stout. Abilities are as follow 15 Strength, 12 Dex, 13 Con, 10 Intelligence, 11 Wisdom, and 12 Charisma, with our plus 2 going to our Strength and our plus 1 going to Constitution to round out the One Horned Hellion. For skills, we're taking Athletics and Intimidation, and with History and Persuasion from our background, talking is thankfully an option. It just may not be the most fun. Appearance we're taking Body Type 2, Voice 7, Head 3, Cool Tone 3 for the Skin Tone. Maturity is optionally set to max depending on just how far along you picture Bruner to be during your playthrough. As he's a dwarf who's lived a dwarf and a half's life, and still commands the respect of his kith and kin. Another optional feature is giving him Scar 1. For reasons I won't say, due to spoiling a fantastic book series I've read and reread a few times now. Eye color we're taking blue one, hairstyle windswept, facial hair rambling obscenity. Not just because it's the longest beard in the game, not because it's one of the few that might be considered dwarf in braids, not because it's a good fit, but because of that damn beautiful name, rambling obscenity. The rest is simply a bonus. For hair color, I have two options, depending if you want our red-bearded dwarf to glow in cutscenes like Lathander himself, or if you want something a little toned back and not quite as glaring as the sun. Orange 4 gives that classic fiery orange red I remember throughout the artwork featuring Bruner Battlehammer, while Ginger 2 lends to a more faded look that won't burn bright during cutscenes. 2 through 12, we're keeping to Battlemaster Fighter, as throughout Bruner has been described as such. As a Battlemaster, we have a lot of control in a fight with numerous benefits that will either bolster you and your allies or deal more damage and effects such as disarming a foe or laying them prone for follow-up attacks with advantage. This plays well to Bruner's described fighting style as he's described constantly tripping, disarming, rallying, or counter-attacking his opponents. Shieldmaster, as our dear red bearded dwarf is hardy, though not what I would call dexterous by any means. Shieldmaster is a minor, though still mitigating ability for those spellcaster heavy fights that acts like evasion, though a very specific version of it. Heavy Armor Master for our more melee centric mitigation, decreasing all incoming non magical damage by 3 while wearing heavy armor, as well as a plus 1 to even out our strength stat. Tough is for ensuring for what damage does get through, our angry firebeard can take it, and far more. 
Savage Attacker, Athlete, Sentinel, Martial Adept are all good choices as well depending on if you need more utility or maneuvers. Find yourself prone often to lock down a target ensuring they can't escape your axe, or just ensure you're putting out the most damage you can with each swing. Hand axes I find a plethora of both magical and mundane, though we really want that beautiful battle axe to go with our shield available. Heavy armor, helms, and anything that can boost our axe wielding dwarf strength, damage, or survivability. For those who know, the House of Hope holds many very special items for those who dare. Bruner has befriended many he thought he never would, from a rogue drow to a lazy halfling, so it's not hard to believe he would accept every companion, though he may be hesitant at first. Lizelle due to her rather alien race, as I don't recall Gith coming up too often in the book series. After Asterion reveals his true nature, he may not think twice and grab a handily left stake on the ground and Gale being a wizard may remind our red-bearded dwarf of his time around the Harple family, as they too are eccentric crafters of the weave who tended to blow themselves up as much as their foes. Shadowheart he'd be hesitant to trust given how she is, though his knowledge of Shar may be anywhere between common to non-existent. Will taking a pact with a devil would put him on edge, Karlak being a tiefling from Avernus would have him watching over his shoulder. Honestly, it's only now I realize we have no Dwarven companions to speak of save for hirelings, which leaves our Bruner making friends the hard way of kith rather than kin. As usual, thank you all for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed. Sorry this one took so long, but being a husband, a father, it being the holidays when I first started working on this, and the weather outside being frightful enough to knock out the power, it's not easy getting these out and done. Not to mention the fact I work full time. As such, I've made a lot of changes to this channel, and the content I put out, including memberships for those who want to see the archive footage, which all still exists, but it's behind a minimum $1.99 a month with more options. I've already had 8 signups for it, and I'm already wondering what the next grand return of Legends of the West, my more popular series on this channel, and the one that got it to where it is, for that promised 50 members. Though, I am adding more options, such as potentially bringing back the Grim Giveaways at 100 members, where the winner wins a game of their choice. That all aside, that's a conversation for another day, and it's time to focus back on my current content. For that, I am always open to ideas, opinions, and requests, so feel free to not just like, share, and subscribe, but drop a comment about what you might like to see in the future of Grim Rolls. Until then, though, stay radical, viewers, and we will catch you all in the next video. See you then.